Hello YouTube Gamer Dad here. Um, I'm excited for this video. We're gonna finally be putting our collision in. Um, after a lot of uh, a lot of work on my part trying to find the best method for it. Uh, this is video 13 in our series. Um, first thing we're gonna have to do here. I hope you enjoyed it. By the way, I hope you guys enjoyed the last videos. Uh, I know you guys wanted to get some shooting done. I got some messages and stuff like when are we gonna get to, to shooting the bullets and all that. And then uh, I I hope you guys like what we did with the asteroid class and creating a list. Um, there's a few things I want to fix before we actually implement uh, the collision and uh, we'll start with that now. So uh, first, uh, remember in the, ast in the last video in the uh, asteroid, uh, oh actually I guess it was three videos ago, in the asteroid revamp and you notice how the asteroids were coming down, actually um, I still have it like that, so we'll build it and play here. See how the asteroids are coming down, they're kind of swaying left and right, and I was like, oh, well, I don't, I'm not sure why that was happening. They should just be coming straight down. It is a cool effect, though, I mean, if you think about it. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix the code so that they, they come down as I intended them to, which is just straight down. Okay? So what we're going to do there is we're going to go over to our asteroid class. Um, and remember at one point I had this commented out here. Um, we can delete that. I thought we could, and we definitely can. And actually, we're not going to have anything in the load content for our asteroid class because we're handling all that in the player class. So we're going to we're going to actually um, we're going to cut these or copy them. Actually, just Control X, cut them, and we're going to put them down um, in the update function. Okay, we'll just put it below our bounding box here so that we're, our origin is getting updated every frame. Um, and that's it for that. So now if we save, uh, let's we'll just comment that origin uh, for rotation. Okay, um, we'll save, build, and run it, and our asteroid should come straight down now. And they do instead of just swaying back and forth. This is how I intended it to work. Uh, if you, I mean, I guess if you guys want to leave it the other way because they're kind of swaying then I, I suppose you could I don't see any harm in it but uh, like I said when I intend uh, for something to work a certain way <laughs> I kind of want to stick with that alright so that's the first fix I want to make so we actually aren't going to have anything in our load content at least not right now for our asteroid class okay um, the second fix I want to make is for testing purpose because we're going to be doing collision let's go back to our player class and remember at some point I reduced our bullet delay to 5 so the bullets shoot really fast. Let's put that back up to 20. And remember I said you need to change it up here in the bullet delay. And then you also need to come down here in your shoot method and change the bullet delay down here as well. Okay. So now if we save that, build it, um, you should have a bullet delay that kind of looks uh, like this. That's a little more spread out. All right, so you can, we can try and be a little more accurate with it instead of just spraying bullets all over the place and nothing's going to get through it, <laughs> which is kind of cool, I guess, but it isn't really fair either, okay? Um, okay, so that's fix number two. Um, and now we're going to start working on uh, adding stuff for uh, our collision. Okay, and you know, in, and uh, you noticed in some of our classes, and I've be been creating these public rectangle bounding boxes, right, in all of our classes, but we never really did anything with them. Um, these are to create, uh, like I mentioned before, is they're going to form an invisible uh, box around our sprite and follow it around the screen wherever it goes. And if one one uh, box collides with another box on a different sprite, then there's going to be a collision. Okay, so we're going to set these up. So um, we're in our player CS. Go to your player .cs. Um And what we need to do is we um, we're declaring our, our bounding box here, but we never define it. So uh, we're going to go down into the uh, update bullets function. And we're going to add, um, add a bounding box. Okay, and so what we need to do in here is, since we already have, um, actually let's go into our, our actual, our update, not our, not our update bullets just the update function in our player.cs and we'll add the, the bounding box for our player ship. Um, okay. Bounding box for our player ship. Alright, and since we're in the update uh, function it's going to be um, calculating that every frame, which is what we want. So we're going to say a bounding box equals new rectangle 
and then uh, if you push down here it takes um, an x coordinate, a y coordinate, a width and a height. So it asks where you want the rectangle to start at. Um, which I'm trying to think here. Um, I'm not sure where the x coordinates start on these uh, on a rectangle. I'm assuming the top left corner uh, because that's where everything else pretty much starts from. So, but I have noticed uh, after testing collision that the the bounding boxes seem a little off. So we might have to adjust all this at the end to make them fit the image a little better. But for now, uh, notice in, in here it says int x int y. We're going to have to pass this as an int. So it'll be int, and then we just want to grab the position of our ship, which will be position dot x. Um, um, typecast this as an int as well. Um, position y and then it's asking for the width and the height of our sprite. So um, in the past I've just uh, put um, hard-coded numbers in there because I knew the dimensions uh, of the sprite, but that's probably bad practice. So we'll just say uh, texture dot width and texture uh, dot height. It's probably a better way of going about it. So you're not actually hard-coding uh, numbers in there. Okay, so that's setting, uh, that's updating our bounding box for our, our spaceship every frame. Uh, now what we want to do is, since we're handling our bullets mainly in our player class, we want to go to our update bullets function here at the bottom, and we want to set the bounding box for our bullets as well. So, um, and we want to do that in our for each statement because uh, what this is doing, like it says, for each bullet in our bullet list, list, update it, right? So, and we want the the bounding box to update every frame where wherever our bullets at on the screen. So it'll be um, b b dot bounding box because we want to set the bounding box for our bullet will equal a new rectangle and it takes the same things so we got we got uh, type that as an int and it'll be uh, b dot position dot x okay another int and b dot position dot y and then like I said I know I know that our bullet is eight pixels um, wide by eight pixels high but I'm not going to hard quote that I'm just going to say bullet dot texture dot width and bullet dot well b dot texture dot y or um, height sorry okay so let's comment that too bounding box for our bullets well we'll just say for every bullet in our bullet list okay Okay, so now that we have a, a, an invisible box around our spaceship and around our bullet, um, we can go into our game one and add the code that we need there for ac the actual collision functions. See, now that we added those bounding boxes, nothing's going to change here. Um, we can run it. I mean, we're still not going to have any collision because we're not saying um, we're not saying to collide with anything or check for any collisions yet. We'll be handling it and see. I can shoot bullets. They're not going to do anything to them either. Okay. So we can go over to our game one dot cs. Um, let me get my notes out here. Okay, so we're gonna want to go down uh, to our update function. Uh, I got a lot of blank space in here from doing my testing. Okay, so um, we're gonna go right here in our for each. So basically, what we're saying here is for each asteroid in our asteroid list, we're gonna update it, right? But we need to do more here. So we'll add to our comments. For each asteroid in our asteroid list, um, check for um, up. Well, we'll just say update it and check for collisions. Okay. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to have I'm going to do two type two collisions here. I'm going to do a collision for our player ship to the to the asteroid. So if our player ship um, hits an asteroid, it, the asteroid is going to get destroyed. And at some point, we're going to add in the same function here. We're going to um, we're going to say you know to like uh, reduce health on the player ship or something when this happens too. But uh, for now, we're just worrying about collision. So uh, we're going to say if um, a dot bounding box. So so we're saying for each asteroid in our asteroid list, we're going to say if that if that asteroid's bounding box, and this is new here that we're going to do, it'll be bounding box dot intersects, 
and then this just takes one value, a rectangle value. So it's asking um, what what are we checking for it to intersect with? What other inter uh, rectangle are we going to check for this to intersect with? And uh, we're going to check um, the rectangle on our player ship. So if um, any of the asteroids bounding box intersects um, our players dot bounding box, okay, um, right? Is that it? 